Hello everybody, this is Gamer Tag Your Willy for another video tutorial. This tutorial I'll be explaining what you need to do to set up a Slayer map type. And for me, this is the first thing I do when I make any map. And so let's say you just made this fort map. All you want on the map right now is obviously the map to be finished. And you want guns to be laid out the way that you want the guns to be laid out in the places you want and health packs to be set up where you want the health packs that's all you want to set up for your base map you don't want any spawn points or anything like that now what you do when you're done with that you get out of forge because you'll be in basic editing and you can't set up any game types in basic editing all you can do is um, edit the map and see all the game types at once if you've already set them up which as you are now you haven't set up any so leave the game switch on game type to slayer classic slayer works perfectly fine it doesn't matter what one it is as long as it's slayer so I always just set classic slayer because it's just the top one there so it's much quicker to get to now when you set up a slayer game type you want to be on the game type slayer because of the fact of game labels and what I mean by that is when you're in basic editing you can't do this but when you're in um, your slayer game type see if you look here classic slayer if you go into advance remember how I was mentioning in that last tutorial about menus how game type labels it had no labels in basic editing or when you're in Slayer or any other game type you will have these different labels and what that means is the first one Slayer does absolutely nothing the reason why it's there is if you say game type specific true and you want to remember that that's true for Slayer like let's say you have some rocks that only appear in Slayer go ahead and say Slayer that way when you're looking at it in basic editing you will see game type specific true and you'll see Slayer so you when you're in the basic editing you don't Re you can't see what it is if you say no label you're just like okay it works for some game type but what game type was that switch is to slayer and it'll help you remember the other one is team only which means that will only show up for team only games and that's not just slayer that's any team game so capture the flag king of the hill headhunter any game that you set it up to be team will have those objects in it same with free-for-all. Any free-for-all game will have it in, but if you set it up to be capture the flag to flag, the free-for-all objects will not be there. But if you set it up for crazy king of the hill free-for-all, those objects will be there. Now, I said don't have any spawn points, and these are the basic ones. These are the ones I put up when I was setting up the map, so I removed these because I don't want them. And the first thing I always do is I always set up the red team and the reason why I do this is because when I go to team it's the first color so it's just easy to flip to it I'm gonna go ahead and set the red team up here I'm gonna go ahead and set up um, two red team members this is gonna the only reason I'm setting up a minimum amount is because I wanna f go through this slightly quickly and not waste your time repeating myself on movements the next one I'm going to set up is the blue team. So let's go ahead and put them down here because it's pretty much the opposite end of the map and have them facing where the red team is. So that's all the blue team I want. Usually you would set up at least four. If you want it to be a big team, you want a minimum of eight for each team. Now that these are set up, the next step I always do is I make them, I look at one, go down to advance, and I say game type label and I make it team only I want to go ahead and leave that on game specific false because I don't care if it's on another game type like Slayer or King of the Hill or whatever what I care about is that it's team only so then we switch over to the guy over here we make it team only do the same thing with the red team Look at this guy, make him team only, and this guy over here, team only. The next step I always do is set up the free-for-all members. 
And the reason why I do that next is one, I don't have to change the team for them. They're already the team that they want. And the another reason is, is I was just changing the red and the blue team to be team only. Well, I'm already at the game type label and all I have to do is hit back once and I'm at free for all. So now not only am I setting up the free for all members, but I'm also e able to change the label type to free for all only because I'm already there and I don't have to switch back and forth to team to free for all team to free for all and it's a pain in the butt or I guess it would be more like change it to team color and then change it to team only so I'm gonna go ahead and set up three free for all spawn points you want them to be very far apart and not looking at each other you don't want them to like run into each other right when they spawn that's really annoying and obviously you want to set up more than three but once again I'm doing this quickly so you don't want to see me set up what I usually do is I set up a minimum of 16 to 20 in, uh, initiations the reason why is if you're playing with 16 people and you have 20 initiations it's a little bit more random because you have those extra spots so it randomly picks one so you're not always gonna spawn at the same time or same place I mean next what I do is I set up respawn points and I don't do anything with these guys I keep them neutral and that's it and I just put them down if there's an area like up here if I want this to be a more likely spawn area I put two or three up there and that just means this has double the chance of spawning because now there's two of them up there instead of um, one of them being down here so I'm gonna go ahead and set up a few usually what I do is I set up 10 to 20 for each team and then I set up 10 random ones and what I mean by that is pretend the space is split in half which is what I'm gonna do in a sec by doing the spawn zones if you remember my spawn tutorial this will explain it if you haven't seen that yet click the radar and it will bring you right to that tutorial and I'll explain what the respawn points and respawn zones do but for now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put a respawn zone splitting this base in half and once again, I apologize for this being a little bit quick, but I am setting up a whole game type in under 10 minutes. Usually this takes me 15 minutes of not talking and just doing it to anywhere between half an hour to I've spent an hour setting up uh, game types for just two different game types. But because I want to show you how to do it, not, you know, bore you with doing it. Okay, so there we go. I got half the base, quote unquote, it's not exactly half, but let's say half of it split. And I want this to be team red. And I go down to advance and say team only. The reason why is because I have a team with this. So I want it to be only there for team games. I don't want it to interfere with free for all games. The other one I'll put is on the other half here. And for the blue team. Now, remember when I said I want 10 to 20 respawn points per team? This game, I have two teams because it's a small map. I probably don't need 20 respawn points. I probably only need about 10 per team. So where each of these splits are, like let's go ahead a little bit bigger. There you go. Make this blue team advance game specific team only all right now I want 10 respawn points on this half of it so that the blue team has 10 and it's just gonna be randomly put there don't put them next to each other spread them out so you don't get spawn killed and then about 10 here on a small map like this 20 if it's a really big map and then put 10 of them just randomly around the map you know behind rocks that are slightly out it can be even inside it. it. Oops, wrong one. It can be even inside the zone, but just make you know a little bit more than ten more, just because then you have on free for all games thirty respawn points, which is really good. That way you don't get spawn killed all the time. It's really nice. Now that you have you know your res you have your starting points for free for all and team, and you have your respawn points for free for all and team because of the neutral and the reason why we didn't set it to be game specific anything 
is because those in, uh, respawn points will not only work for free for all as blue team, but when you're playing free or sorry team games as blue team on this half and red team on that half. But when you're playing a free for all game, these will work as free for all respawn points for anybody. So that's why I don't tell it to be game specific or label it or anything. I just leave it the way it is. The only thing we're missing now is initiate or loadout cameras. Now, I mentioned before in my spawn tutorial, the one that hopefully you guys watched, that if it's neutral, it will be for any team. If it's team's color, it's for that specific team. But you always want to put a few of these out, usually featuring the best feature for your map. So here I'm going to have an overview of it. I usually don't do that until I'm done with all of my game types. Um, but because of this, oh, I forgot to delete one when I was messing around. Ha, we got two staring at the place on this one. But, anywho, because I want to show you how to set up a Slayer, if you're only setting up a Slayer game, technically you would be finished. It would be very poorly done because you only have very few spawn points. If you did the numbers that I said, you know, 8 per team for the initiation ones, and then 10 per team for respawn points, and 16 to 20 for the free-for-all initiations. You know, if you do all that, and you set it up properly like this, then you've got your Slayer completely finished, ready to go. Initiation cameras are all set, you're done. But if you're wanting this to work for infection or anything like that, then you, you could do that now with the loadouts, or you can wait until you're completely done. Either way, it's up to you. But... I hope this helped you figure out how to set up a Slayer game type. And this is what I'm going to uh, base all my other tutorials on for game type specifics. I'm going to assume that you've already done a Slayer loadout. And you'll understand this a lot more when I do my next tutorial, which will probably be infected because I usually do Slayer and then I do an infected map. But you'll understand a lot more when I show you it for these loadouts and why I did it the way I did. So I hope this helped you and I hope to see you on the next tutorial how to set up an infection game type. If you wish to see um, any of my other tutorials or any of the tutorials that I have yet to post, click the menu button in the upper right hand corner there and it will bring you to my interactive menu. You have to have um, annotations on or you won't be able to use it so I'm sorry people who are using your iPad and your iPhones and your smartphones you won't be able to use it I apologize but you can go to my YouTube and my um, YouTube channel and playlist all the menu things are there too and all my tutorials are there so you can find it that way too but it's much easier clicking that link up there and if you wish to see how to set up the rules for Slayer, you can either go to that menu or for a quick link down at the bottom where my radar is. If you click that, it will bring you directly to the YouTube video on how to set up your rules for Slayer. And I'll explain in high detail, it will be a long tutorial of everything in the rule types section and that will really help you for not only setting up Slayer but a lot of other different types of game types. So I hope to see you there. And I hope this helped you. Leave comments below, questions, anything. Leave it there, I'll answer you. And subscribe as always. This is Gamertag, your Willie, signing off.